sailing, scenery, and Stanley Jordan. When we last left you, we were spending some time on Swan's Island with our newfound friends. <laughs> it was Valdemar Almeida, no relation. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Wow, what a story. We sure hope we see you guys again. I recorded a riff for the beginning guitar section of my True Fire channel. I got excited for a second here because I thought Muriel went to the bow to pick up the anchor, but I was dreaming. So we had ourselves a pretty nice little sail over to Merchant Row for one last little stay in my favorite place in Maine. This time at a great little anchorage at Buckle Island. Okay, so I am going to put a stake in the ground here at the edge of the water to see how far the tide goes out during our short little stay here. We found a beautiful spot to have some dinner and with quite a view. Time to row back to old Avocet. I woke to a lovely fog. We went back to Buckle Island where I started recording a new tune while Brian had a walkabout to see what he could find. That is a lot of jellyfish. Don't worry, it's just paint. <laughs> okay, madam, your chariot awaits. Okay, I'll step in. So back aboard, we cobbled together a pretty random dinner of baked brie and chicken wings. We were in bad need of a store before our next few days anchored out. We awoke to more fog and the sound of big vessels trying not to bump into each other. The fog did lift enough to start off on the day's sailing, stopping first at Stonington and then Burnt Cove for its grocery store, before carrying on to Winter Harbor. The fog never fully dissipated, and by the time we got to Burnt Cove, you could just see it pouring over the hilltops from the south, so it became clear pretty quickly that this would be our home for the night. Fun to watch the lobstermen coming in out of the fog. And this harbor seal thought it was fun watching us too.
That is thick, and I love it. The next day finally dawned bright and sunny, and we had a pretty carefree sail over to Winter Harbor on Final Haven Island. Our plan was to look around a bit and find just the right spot, but the first little hidey hole we poked our nose into was so beautiful that we just threw the hook down and called it home. And this little guy cinched the deal. We then rode over to a beach that's only exposed at low tide, and boy, that water was icy. Yeah, a little chilly? Wonderful trip so far. It seems like everything that we need all of a sudden just falls into our lap, just miraculously. And to so many... I need a thousand dollars. Yes. And it's not working. There's been a, a few little things we've moaned about, like the uh, lobster guys. In August, when it really gets hot in the day, they get up early. 3, 30, 4 o'clock. And so do we. <laughs> you know, when the boat starts going like that, that's our lobster boat alarm clock. You know, about four o'clock or slightly before. You, you know, hear the rumble, you know the waves are coming. That's right, and then you have to grab the dishes before they fall out of the <laughs> The trade-off yes. trade is they're done early and you have places like this, and really to yourself, for yes. the whole day, except for that early morning. Yeah. And, uh, so it's a good trade, I guess. Yeah. There's been a few black flies. We have two swatters that both have lots of repair tape on them. <laughs> yes. From heavy use. <laughs> okay, I'm coming in too. <laughs> this is a losing battle. Yeah. But really, these are small complaints. It's been really lovely. Yeah. But uh, if you're watching this and you're sitting home thinking, man, I would love to go sailing. But I just can't because I'm in Ohio or Colorado or someplace inland and I, it looks all very expensive and how do I do it? It's really, it's very accessible. Um, a, this boat, if you went on yachtworld.com and looked in used boats for a grand year 30, you would find probably at least a couple for under $10,000, maybe under five. Go small, go simple, go now. But that's you can do this. Go get a boat. Do it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're waiting for a wind that will help us get home. Palma is that way, and the wind has all been kind of flavors of that way. So that's the wrong direction for us. We need some wind from that way or that way or that way. So that's what we're asking for you. If you could just uh, get us some wind to go in the right direction, yes. we'd really appreciate that. That would be very helpful. Thanks. If you're wondering about all this string here, I've got this string ties this tank to the boat because it will fall out of here. There's nothing really positive holding this to the grill. So your tank and your expensive regulator floats away. Things like to fall overboard. This other line, this one just keeps it pulled over. This thing will kind of swing back and forth. It's all just to steady it. It's just lime juice and mango juice. There's no tequila in here, I assure you. Yeah, right. You're not still taping, are you? I decided to have a quick row before dinner because this golden hour light was just so beautiful. Oh, wait, hey, 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 you don't like margaritas, do you? I do now. But you can't have orange juice. It has orange juice in it. No, not very much. I'll survive. <laughs> I'll be right there. Okay. 
Put down the margarita and step away from the glass. <laughs> yeah, sure. Order has been restored. So this is Hen Island on the east side of Vinyl Haven in the middle of Penobscot Bay, Maine. Beautiful little spot. Muriel lovingly called me back to the boat. I thought for dinner, but no, she also wanted to use this nice light to record a segment for her teaching channel. I consider the tremolo technique the real litmus test of right hand technique. You have to have everything going uh, the right way in order to make the tremolo at all. And so once you've got the tremolo happening, you've got right hand technique just down pat. So now we're just in drop G tuning and it starts just like this on open strings. So for stars of another variety, I'd like to take us back to Nashville for just a few minutes where Muriel recently did one of her Monday Night Lives with Stanley Jordan. Oh, it's so great for you to join me here, Stanley. For the, those of you who are joining us uh, remotely, this is Stanley Jordan, uh, great friend, brilliant musician and scientist as well. Well, let's do a little, how about Imagine? I've never played Imagine quite like that. <laughs> <laughs> I've never even imagined it. <laughs> I just completed something last night. It's like a half an hour journey through the first 92 elements of the periodic table. And it's, it's a eight measure groove, um, eight measures on each element. There's a thing called the ionization energies. It's like a vibrational signature for each element. And so I've turned those into musical chords and scales. And I, I just, the, the central core of it is this idea that the arts are a great lens for viewing the whole world. And mm. people often sequester the arts off into a, some separate domain and then they downplay it and they defund it and all that. But if you take the arts as your primary view of things, you can get to everywhere from the arts. You can get to 
science and world affairs and you can understand money like sometimes even i take the word money and the word music and i accidentally say the other one <laughs> to me it's just an energy flow you know yeah. i think that we musicians have um we have an elegant way of looking at things that the world needs to cultivate more and even if you're not looking to become a virtuoso if you bring out your own innate artistic sensibility it's going to help you with everything you do you know in my work in um, music therapy studies i've come across some of the studies that show how having um, experience cultivating your artistic side can help with your cognitive development with your language skills it, it's just it in especially music mm -hmm. music integrates the brain in a way that i don't know if any other stimulus can your auditory nerve splits and it goes to every center of your brain so it's like we're wired for sound bye see ya so join us next week as we go deep up perry creek on a falling tide and test muriel's tolerance for the proximity of boulders and sandbars Arr. we also reconnect with our new friend nikos apollonio and share a warm summer night of dinner and music at anchor